I'm Robin Cloud, and after 20 years in New York City, I've moved to Los Angeles to further my career in stand-up comedy and filmmaking. Okay, here we go. You wanna go to the river? Yeah, let's go to the okay. river. It sounds nice. I live with my fiance, Katie Lindsay, who is a theater director. And she's actually from LA, so for her, it's just like coming home. So we're two directors, lots of direction happening on a regular basis. Two years have passed since I went on this journey. It's been such a long, interesting, emotionally charged experience. A lot of people have asked me why I did it. And I guess growing up with the family folklore around the story, I had the question, what if the children were looking for us? feel differently about your family or? No, I mean, I guess I love them even more. Doing this project and like researching and all of that just sort of makes me have more of affinity for family members that I already have. So that's been the interesting thing. Culture almost outweighs blood. How you're raised, how you view the world, the foods you eat, the music you listen to, that stuff is almost more important. It is more important for the culture, man. Yeah. These people, this family, had their choice taken away from them. And here I was, a person who had all the information and that could present the choice back to them, give them another opportunity to be connected to a larger identity. So many of them have said to me that, like, their identity has been questioned their entire lives. Like Janine has said that, oh, people ask me all the time if I'm black or they assume I'm black or they thought her blonde children were adopted because all the kids at their kid's school thought that their mom was black. I was hoping that in sharing this information with my Nebraska cousins that they would feel, oh my God, like, I'm black, <laughs> or I'm biracial, or wow, like, this is so cool and dope, and like, I have this like amazing family, because my family is amazing. And what I found was people who were like, what do I do with that now? You can present someone all the information and the DNA test results and all of that, but that doesn't change how you were raised and how you see yourself in the world. The only person that I've like stayed consistently in touch with as of right now is Janine because she seems the most open to me and I think she's interested in exploring more. Yeah, with the other guys, we just stay in touch pretty casually. I haven't talked to Becky Jo actually since the reunion. I'm not really sure where she is in this process, but I hope she's doing well. Sometimes I think about how I would feel if someone came to me with this information. Be like, oh, you are not who you thought you were. In this political climate, the history of this country, you've been enjoying white privilege your whole life, even though you look like a black man. I mean, it's the same, it's the same choice that their parents made. White privilege is the most valuable asset in America. And this proves it. There's this feeling of rejection, you know, even though like, I don't need approval, I, I know blackness is dope, but there was this feeling of like, look at how amazing we are. You know, don't you wanna be a part of this too? And I think the reaction was, eh, we're good. Does that have any effect about how you think about having kids? I definitely feel like our children will be people of color for sure. Because that's how they're gonna be seen by the world. That's the culture that I will be imprinting on them. And then what cultural aspects you have to imprint on them, that's up to you. Yeah. What is white culture? Oh God. <laughs> I mean, Jewish culture, there's that, you know, right. but. Yeah. So what do you pass like, on? Do you pass on what you know, or do you pass on like this kind of intellectual idea of the past? Mm -hmm. We'll see. TBD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, now, don't get the dirt off my face. Rita, sit.
Black Power. 